Guys, first of all, um, I, I, I would love to thank our passionate fan base. Um, you know, I you know when you talk about us being able to, we made the NIT and we played three of what I describe as um, electric games in this building, and our fan base turned out, and I thought that they were incredible for all three. Um, that says a lot about our, our fans and how passionate they are about our program. Uh, second of all, um, I like to. You know, thank my players. Um, when, you, when you think about our season, when we go in 24 and 11, um, I don't think that there was a game out of those 35 games that I didn't feel like they gave me maximum effort through wins or loss. Sometimes the ball didn't go in. Uh, we had highs, we had lows. Um, you know, obviously, as you guys know, we had one game where we scored 24 points. But that being said, I thought every single time we stepped on the floor, those guys competed for me. And that's what, you know, obviously trying to establish a great culture. And I think we're moving in the right direction. My coaching staff did a tremendous job, um, obviously preparing these guys. They worked extremely hard. And then we go to the, the families and the um, parents of these young men and how hard they have worked um, to obviously be able to let me to coach their kid. That being said, uh, what a great for you guys, probably not for me, uh, great game to watch. It was a tremendous offensive game. Uh, I felt like whoever had the ball the last time would have the opportunity to, to win the game. I thought Markel Johnson made a tremendous play down the stretch to give us the lead, and, and then their point guard obviously did the same thing. He, did a, he had a great steal at the end and then obviously made a play to win the game. Um, proud of these guys. Um, certainly no, uh, no one wants their season to end this way, um, but when I look at our body of work, um, I can sleep at night feeling that I, this program is moving in the right direction. And our guys have gained valuable experience from this. Um, you know, we're one of 20 teams uh, between the NCAA and NIT that are still playing basketball up until the day. And so, I, honestly, you know, I, when I got in the locker room, I told those guys we talked about their maximum effort all year long. And I gave everybody a hug because I'm proud of how hard we competed. If we continue to get better, um, then obviously we'll learn from this and uh, we'll be able to keep moving the program forward. So, questions? Let's start with questions for Thorne. Did he have a career high in the points? And obviously, you pointed out there, will you remember that or the last player that passed on the Um Honestly, I probably just remember the electric environment that it was tonight. You know, I just tried to play every play in the moment and and take it in and enjoy it. You know, because when I lose, that would be my last game at at state in front of our own fans. So, you know, I'll probably just remember that. Did you see Cooper on the, on that play? We were trying, you were trying to get to Markel, but did you see Cooper? On on which play? The pass on that where he stole the ball. And got the free yeah, he kind of just broke in front of the pass and, and got to <laughs> it. So. Given the game that you played, um, you know, almost seems un unjust for it to end this way. I guess, like in the moments, kind of when the game ended, that, I mean, that must have been a, a you know hard feeling to even kind of wrap your head around. Yeah, it's definitely tough. You know, any loss is tough for me because I'm a competitor. I love to win, so uh, any loss is tough. You know, I, I tried to give it all for my teammates, and, and the fact that we couldn't win, I was more, you know, upset for them and, and being hard on myself because I felt like I could have made a couple plays down the stretch and it would have been a little different. But, you know, that's life. You know, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way, and it's not about, you know, it's about how you react to it and how you come back from it. So, you played multiple games here at Reynolds Coliseum, mm -hmm. but can you ever remember it being that intense? Uh, for the full 40 minutes the way it was tonight. Yeah, that was probably the most intense electric game I've ever played at Reynolds. And, you know, it was it was amazing. Probably one of the most fun games that, that I've had at State, so. so. We're in the juxtaposition of your last two years, your first two years you sat one and then you played the mm -hmm. first year. NC State obviously did significantly better as a team. Your thoughts on that and how it's looking going forward? Uh, I think it's looking great going forward. You know, my first two years, I feel like, you know, we had a lot of different pieces and we just couldn't get it together. And then, you know, coach came and, and we were able to, you know, establish a, a different type of culture and, and playing hard and, and, you know, taking everything a little a little more seriously. And I think it's done wonders for the program. And, and I like the way that the, the direction that we're moving in. So. Torin, what's the thing that you're going to remember most or take away most from your time in this program? Uh, just my teammates, you know, all the teammates that I've had over the years, all the great times we've had, all my coaches that have, you know, 
been able to impart some wisdom on me. Um, all the fans that come out and support us every day, you know, every game is amazing. You know, I try to take it in every game. So I just remember all of that. You know, remember all the the everybody that had a part in it. You know, NC State is is a beautiful place, and it's a place where you know a lot of people love to to get behind a team that works hard, and and we've just seen that and that energy be able to carry on. So I remember that. Torn in the big picture, and you've experienced everything. Mm -hmm. How do you think you can make an impact when the ball stops bouncing down the road, based on all the things you've learned the last five years? Um, I would just say basketball is kind of like life. You know, it's a roller coaster, and and you can never get too high or too low. So everything I've learned, you know, on the court and off the court, I'll be able to take it into when I'm a father, you know, or a husband one day, and just be able to, you know, stay even killed and and, and inspire, try to inspire other people, you know, to be able to chase their dreams. Because NC State's allowed me the chance to chase mine, you know, every day since I was 11 years old. I pray at night to be able to play in the ACC, and NC State gave me the chance to do that. So. You know, I can't be more happy and can't be more blessed for the opportunity. What's your favorite memory of Coach Keats? Of Coach Keats? <sighs> be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's too honestly, it's hard to pick one. You know, it's it's really hard to pick one. One memory is that's like picking your favorite song. It's too many to choose from. So I would just say to the the energy that he brought to NC State is my favorite memory. You know, just being being here for so long, I was able to see a change in energy and it carried on through the program and through the fan base. So that's probably the the my favorite memory of it. Who shoots better? Who shoots better? Me or coach? Mm -hmm. Me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we played the shooting game, ask him who won. He's right there. <laughs> you guys done with him? <laughs> Thanks, TD. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, bro. Right, cool. <laughs> On that note, Coach, what has uh, Torn Dorn meant to this program? You know, he's meant a lot to this program. I want you to think about it. I've taken a 6'5 guy. And I've asked him to be successful in the ACC as kind of a big guard, power forward. Um, he's embraced it. He's um, played extremely hard. He's led us in rebounding. He led us in scoring. Uh, I think the thing that stands out about him is that um, as good of a basketball player as he is, he's a tremendous person. You know, he's an ambassador for NC State. He believes in the brand of NC State. Uh, he's about everything you think about culture. When you're thinking about a young man who's, uh, you know, has already graduated, um, you know, he's still working on another degree. Um, you never have to worry about him off the court. He does all of the right stuff. Um, he is, you know, obviously matured right in front of our eyes. You know, this he was a disappointed young man when I took the job because. The year before he played, he had a very good non-conference, but when conference came around, he didn't have the same opportunities. And just to see him play his last game and be aggressive and score 34 points and, and play in front of an electric crowd, it means a lot to me. You know, when we all get in this business, we want to know that, um, you know, wins or losses that we're sending young men into the, to the real world um, ready. And I don't know that there's another young man in the world that's more ready than Torin Dorn. When one guy has 44 points on the other team, you have to expect him to be the one who takes those shots at the end, right? I mean, were you surprised that it was Cooper and not Matthews? No, I, I thought, yeah, I thought the ball bounced in his hand. Um, I, I thought, you know, um, when he made the corner three, I thought it was good. It, it, listen, it was a tremendous offensive game. And it, it really literally came down to whoever had the ball last. Um, Matthew's game tonight was outstanding. I mean, he was tremendous. Uh, we knew coming in he was a big time scorer. Um, I'm leaving the game saying he was the best scorer that I played against this year. I mean, he raised up, he made shots. Uh, he was good, he made shots on the break. Uh, and, and they're an elite offensive team. 
Um, you know, obviously, uh, I knew that coming in. You know, number eight in the country as far as scoring. It was uh, it was a great game. If you were a fan, you loved it. Um, it's unfortunate that we had to come in, come um, on the short end of this, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Kevin, when you thought about the long term, when you took over and you started to build this program, are you aware is the program where you thought it would be or hoped it would be through two years? Well, when I when I took the job, one thing I promised is that we would compete and we would play hard. Um, I also promise that our, it'll, it'll play a style that our fans will love. And you know, if you look at our fans, I, they've turned out whether we're playing at the PNC or we're playing here in Reynolds. And our guys are fighters. Um, you know, at, we don't have the talent that some of the teams that we're playing against in the ACC has right now. But I will tell you that now that we're, every time that they go out on the floor, our guys compete and fight. And so the answer to your question is, I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, I, I hope the guys continue in the program to get better. Um, that's what we're looking for. And the guys who are moving on, which would be obviously Torin Dorn and Eric Lockett, um, I wish them a lot of success because I think both of those guys will you know, play basketball, but when the ball stops, they both will be successful in life. How important is it to have a guy like Torin come through in the early stages of building your program that the younger guys can see and look to and set an example? Well, he's everything. Um, you know, the guy is a – and forget about the fact that he's a basketball player. He's a great ambassador for NC State. I mean, he's a tremendous – those guys don't come along very often. Um, and, you know, I'll go back and say it as, you know, when you talk about a guy who does everything right, um, you know, that's torn down. You mentioned the guys who you're losing. What's your confidence level on the other guys who you'll, you will have back? Do you feel like – all those guys were back, or most of those guys were back? Yeah. Yeah, Joe, I, I, I hope that um, that everybody will return. Now, obviously, I know you guys read, you know, right now it's almost 400 guys in the transfer portal. So you never know. Um, what we usually do is I take a couple of days and, you know, I let everybody's mind get cleared and guys catch up on some academic stuff. And then I typically have a meeting with each individual guy and kind of figure out where they're at mentally. Um, from my standpoint, uh, I would love for everybody to stay um, and to help continue to build a program. Uh, we've got a tremendous freshman who's sitting out, and Manny Bates, and I think if we can add him to the mix, um, along with some of the guys that we uh, that we have coming in and we're going to sign, and guys that we will recruit, I think we can move the program, keep moving in the right direction. What, what, is, what is that next step that, that, that you need for this program to go in that direction that you want to take? Well, I, I mean, uh, obviously, um, I, I know everybody talks about the NCAA. That's our goal, too, obviously, to get to the NCAA. And, and from uh, our perspective, we, we thought we did you know, pretty much enough to get there. Unfortunately, um, it didn't happen. But I want to continue this program moving up with, you know, I, I'm blessed. Um, I, I think, in, um, if I'm not mistaken, we've won 45 games in two years. Um, as, a, as a staff and with the guys that's in the program. It's pretty good. Now we want to continue. We want to continue to build. We want to continue to build a program. We want to continue to get guys better. Um, you know, I've always come from a background where development is huge. And so some of the guys, um, we want to break their game down and get better in their areas and then move the program forward. Have you ever coached against a guy that hit 44 points? I don't think so. You know, it was a point in the game where he was scoring that I wanted to come out there. Then I realized I had patella um, tendon surgery and I couldn't guard him either. <laughs> but, I mean, he, listen, he was electric tonight. Um, I, I know you guys saw it. So, you know, it was majority of the shots were tough shots and we wanted him to take tough shots. Um, but he was good. I mean, he had a great night and he was good. And, um, you know, I, I tipped my head to him. Yeah, well, well, Joe, I'll go back and I'll look at the entire season. I'll look at those games that we lost at the end. I'll look at the ones we won at the end at Pittsburgh, the ones we won um, Clemson here. You know, we had, because, we, you know, we don't have, we've got a small margin for error. 
a lot of our games came down to the end. And, um, you know, obviously we'll go back and see if we can get better at that. But a lot of times it's players making plays. Um, you know, when you look at even in the NIT, you know, what the games were against Harvard and Hofstra were, you know, close games at the end, and I thought we made some plays. So we'll, we'll look at the whole entire season. Uh, I'm, I'm a guy that, that obviously shoots for perfection. And so if there's an area where I think that we need to improve, then, you know, we'll go to work and we'll try to get better in that area. And, you know, that's what uh, good programs and good coaches and good players do. They improve on their weaknesses and get better for the next season. Can you tell you about why you got the technical foul? Well, I know why I got it. <laughs> I don't know why the call was made, but I, I absolutely deserved a technical foul. I mean, I, I mean, I was very upset. Uh, I thought I, I thought it was a bad call, and that's a disagreement. So I, I absolutely know why I got it. Coach, I'd love to get your thoughts about playing here at Reynolds Coliseum, especially with the atmosphere that it provided tonight. You know, obviously a sold-out crowd, um, and how loud it was in there. It, What's your thoughts as far as maybe playing more games here at Wellington, including games during the ACC? Season? Yeah, you know, I know it's I know it's been a big conversation about Reynolds, and and obviously you guys know how much I love Reynolds, and it's a great place. That being said, we're probably a few one of the few teams in the country that has two great places to play. Uh, the PNC is an unbelievable arena; it holds nineteen thousand. Uh, we sell that place when we're talking about recruitment. Um, we sell it when we're talking about, you know, obviously um, we got a passionate fan base. So the good balance of trying to figure out, um, from what I've been told, we've got 10,000 season ticket holders. Well, of course, you can't get 10,000 people in here. So it's got to be a great balance. That being said, th there may be more uh, than one game um, in this building if we can figure out how to do it. Um, you know, without, you know, I don't want to put anybody in a bad spot because it would be fair, unfair for me to say I won't play six games in here when I don't know the whole history. Or I do know that we've got a certain amount of games that we have to play in the PNC, which is 15. I do know that we have a, um, a season ticket base of 10,000 season tickets. I know we have to allow our student body a certain amount of tickets. So if we can figure all that stuff out and keep everybody happy, then certainly I would love to play a couple more games. Like at the beginning of the second half, were you upset with a defensive switch or a defensive assignment? What was your? It seemed like you guys had a little conference there. Well, it wasn't a conference. It was the coaches, right? Um, I, I just, I, I wanted him to get up. Um, but you know, one of the things I wanted to do is obviously keep the pressure on those guys and try to wear them down. And I felt like he had backed up a couple times at half court. Is it possible for you to put into words your thoughts on Markel? such an important player to your team, but obviously here we are in game 35, I think you said, and you're still talking to him about defensive assignments. Yeah. Game look, he that he has grown so much, Joe. I, I, I know you guys remember when Markel Johnson came to school, and um, – I think everybody will look at him and say, man, that, that kid has take big strides. And you see him on the basketball court, not only that, I've seen him take big strides in the classroom. I've seen him take strides um, on campus and everything else. Um, but, you know, I'm harder on my point guard because I expect those guys to be an extension of me on the court. So anytime there's a breakdown, whoever's running that point at the time, those are the guys who are usually going to get it. Uh, that being said, I mean, he's had a tremendous year. Um, you know, I, I've been all on him about being consistent. I thought he got consistent, but, you know, that being said, he's still got to get better in a lot of areas. Um, but, but I love his play. You know, you know, he led our team. He made big shots for us when we needed to. Uh, our team started to rely on him at the end of the year to make those shots, and for the most part, he did. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys.